So once again, I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to come here to St. Columba Parish and to particularly to celebrate with the school community. Uh, it's Catholic Schools Week, so you can never thank them enough. Those teachers, administrators, benefactors and supporters of the school, very special way, parents as well, I'm sure. Uh, we, we are celebrating this great gift of Catholic education really throughout the country in the United States for this whole week, but it's something we need to celebrate all the time and, and to appreciate and to thank God. And, and I say this again too for the sacrifices that people make as parishioners here at the parish, uh, but also families to, to make Catholic education possible for the lives of our children. I believe we've, we're blessed throughout the Diocese of Harrisburg with Catholic schools. It's something that since I've become a bishop that I've come to appreciate even more. I, now into my eighth month as the Bishop of Harrisburg, uh, it is a, I, I see that the Catholic education is a great resource and, and a great opportunity for us for the church's core mission, which is that of evangelization, carrying the message of the gospel, as we sang, to the ends of the earth, proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations, as we sang in the Responsorial Psalm. The mission of the church is to proclaim Jesus Christ how significant it is as well that we celebrate this Mass today, conscious of that mission and the great role that Catholic education plays in the work of evangelization, that we're also blessing this image of Jesus. So beautiful, so striking in its power and its witness to the presence of Jesus Christ within this church, the celebration of sacraments within this community. It is Jesus that we proclaim, that we are called to proclaim. You know, long before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah had foretold a time when all people would come to recognize the one true God of Israel. We heard that in the first reading from Isaiah, that vision that others will be coming from other nations to join the children of Israel in recognizing the one true God and come to Jerusalem and adore him and offer sacrifices which, just like those of the Jewish people, would be acceptable to God. The universal mission of the church is the fulfillment of that prophecy. All the nations are to come to recognize the one true God and to come into the truth. St. Paul said to Timothy in the second reading that, that we are all, it is God's desire that all should be saved and come to knowledge of the truth. It's God's desire that all should be saved. Every person created in the image and likeness of God is loved beyond imagining by God, the Creator. And to come to a, with a relate to a relationship with Him, an understanding of the truth that God has revealed to us. It's God's will that all should be saved and come to knowledge of the truth. And then Jesus in the Gospel, speaking to His Father and praying for His apostles. That's the scene from our Gospel that we just heard proclaimed. That it is the night before He died and He prays to His Father, Father, he prays that they first will all be one and that they will be consecrated in the truth. Consecrated in the truth. He says, consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. And he sends them forth. He said, I will no longer be in the world as I have been, but they are in the world. And they are to proclaim that truth, to carry it. Now that mission given to the apostles is handed down to us in this age, so many thousands of years later, but it's an important role for every Christian, for each of us in our own way. And a Catholic school forms disciples, forms them in the faith, forms them in the truth, literally over the course of their, their years, consecrates them in the truth. Now it's a, it's a very important tool that the church has developed in a very important way to form disciples of Jesus, who will then themselves carry that truth to others. As we celebrate this Mass today and recognize the centrality of the person of Jesus in each of our lives, I think the Word of God is inviting us also, challenging us to think about how we do proclaim Him, how we introduce Him to others. You know, that sometimes we think that that is about teachings. Certainly it happens in schools. It is. It is teaching. Teaching the sacred scripture, the teachings of the church. I, I personally, I believe that because of that core mission in our Catholic schools, I think Catholic schools are more important than ever right now because 
the understanding of the truth as proclaimed and revealed by God throughout the years, throughout the ages, is called into question in, a way, in, a, in our times in a, in a very, very serious way, very confusing way, I think. For young people to be led in so many different directions, you can find whatever truth you want to have on the internet. Whatever truth you think is the truth, you choose to be the truth. We know that we follow the one who is true, the everlasting truth revealed by Jesus Christ. And that's where we have our hope. That's where we have our salvation. So how important it is now more than ever to form disciples who will proclaim the truth and live that truth. We also need to think about that again, our own witness, our example. And I, I, I think that this is something that I, I often recognize. You know, in the early church, the very early days of the church, after, the, you know, of course, the resurrection of Jesus, the ascension into heaven, sending the Holy Spirit, the church started very small. It was, when you think of it, there were 11 apostles, and then they brought in Matthias to replace Judas, right? They started with a very small group. There were the others that were immediate followers, our Blessed Mother, the other women who were in the company of Jesus and the apostles. But it was basically a small community. And yet, if we hear in the Acts of the Apostles, it started to spread very rapidly. And it happened because of relationships that were formed and communities that were formed that were built around this message of people who then, through baptism and the sacraments, were consecrated in the truth. And they themselves spread it even further. It multiplied very quickly. Christianity caught on. And yes, there is a message that is preached and spoken, but was it, what was even more persuasive to people, what draw, pe drew people even more readily to the gospel and to Jesus Christ, was the witness, the example of the Christians, the extraordinary way in which they lived. They were moved, people were moved by that. Their lives had been changed by their encounter with Jesus Christ, and they lived that in the way they cared for one another, the way they cared for the poor, the most vulnerable, the way they made sacrifices for other people, the way they patterned their life on the love and mercy of God that was revealed in Jesus, that's what drew people to them. Our witness, brothers and sisters, is the most powerful way that we can evangelize, by bearing witness to our faith by the way we live. And again, your young children who are here, how important it is, it is for each of us, right? To let Jesus be known in us. To bear witness to him by the way we live. By the way we care for each other. By the way we help one another. By the way we are willing to help others when we're asked to. Or when we just know that someone needs a little more attention, a little more care and support, right? To be the presence of Jesus for others. That's what it means to be a disciple, to take that message. And the mission of the church is as strong today as it has ever been, to take the mission, to take the word of God, the truth, to the ends of the earth. And that begins one person at a time, by our witness and our example. So as we continue to pray today and focus in just a moment on the image of Jesus, the crucifix, to be blessed, let's allow the Lord to show us in a new way Maybe even say a little prayer. Lord, help me to bear greater witness, clearer witness by my life, my relationship with you. Let my consecration in the truth be more visible through my choices, through my priorities, through the way in which I encounter and accompany others. So that the word of God, the word that is truth, will be made more visible in each of us.